Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Miss Toto. So today's video, I am going to talk to you guys about how I grew my hair with protective styling. Um, and I know a lot of people want to know how you just grow your hair, you know, without the whole weave or without, you know, you want to know the products, the stuff you put in your hair, all the other type of stuff. But um, in a sense, this is something that you put in your hair. So I just want to give you guys my um, my way as to how I grew my hair with protective styling. So before I do that, I need you guys to make sure you go down there, yes, down there, and you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so that way you know when I post my latest videos and you can get more videos like these. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. I YouTube natural hair. Once I found out about natural hair, hair I was like, okay, I'm a transition and, um, you know, just grow it out to a length that I'm comfortable with or I was going to try to grow it out to like um, maybe curly here, but I couldn't, um, whenever it came to wash day, because I would always just, you know, to avoid from me doing my hair all the time, I would still put it in protective styles, but when I took it out like two months later, the two textures, the straight and the curly or the new growth and the straight texture would not work. It was like it was getting stuck, it was getting tangled, it was getting matted, and I, I just hated that I had to fight between these two textures. So I'm like, you know what? I can't just wait for this to get long and then cut it. I'm just gonna big chop. So that's what I did in 2011. So I transitioned for like 10 months and then I um, chopped off the remainder of my hair. So my hair was probably about five inches long so I had like about this much and I'm doing this because this is how my hair was standing up when I was done I didn't have the what they call the good hair or the pretty textured hair to where it was like all loose big curls and waves everywhere it was like kinky coily yes all of that cottony it was just like so yeah um, and so I'm used to having, you know, long hair, a lot of hair. So in order for me to be comfortable, that's when I started to wear protective hairstyles. Um, so I started to do braids. Um, I started to do twists. I started to do fake Afro puffs, uh, ponytails. Um, and then crochet wasn't big then, but I had found like two people on YouTube who had did crochet hairstyles, like with the big loose curly like water wave bohemian braid with those hairs now um so i end up uh going to the store and of course, of course purchasing that and i end up wearing that hair a lot of people thought it was my hair like i said crochet wasn't big back then so when they seen it me with the hair they was like oh my god they're trying to figure out what it was it was like is it a wig is it uh tree braids is it like what is it how did you do that and I was just like, oh, I just crochet again. I braided my hair up and I crochet. And yeah, I started to get some customers and I was an in-kitchen hairstyle. Side note. Anyway, um, so yeah, I just started to really YouTube um, all of the hairstyles that I knew I can do. I knew as long as I can braid, I can do the hairstyle. So I end up doing that. So um, I say that to say this. Protective styling does grow your hair. And the reason why it does and the reason why it won't. The reason why it does is it because it keeps your hands out of your head. A lot of us are so used to switching up our hairstyle like every week or every couple weeks, especially if you was getting your hair done by your mom or whatever and she just always kept, you know, switching it up with ponytails and all this other type of stuff and you're just used to getting your hair done. But um, with you having like braids or, and my mom always did that, she always put our hair in some type of protective hairstyle and I know it was mainly for her not to you know continually do it but it also helped our hair grow because we kept our hands out of our head so we're not constantly putting stress on it we're not constantly tugging at it pulling at it we're not constantly combing it we're not constantly you know putting all this stuff in our hair we just letting it be so the protective hairstyle is literally protecting your hair from your hands so um, that's why protective hairstyling does um, help grow our hair because it's keeping us from doing any bad or unless you're disciplined enough to be like okay I'm gonna do my hair even though you, you really can't you can't say I'm not gonna touch my hair for a week when it's loosely out you're gonna have to or else it's gonna get tangled and matted um, but your hair can still grow in that manner as long as you don't constantly mess with it constantly pull at it or tug at it or comb it or you find ways like detangling with your fingers instead of using a tool or a comb or using less heat or no dyes that manner you can actually 
um, keep your hair growing, um, retaining length instead of it constantly being, you know, stressed from all the things that you, all experiments that you do to your hair. The ways that it won't is obviously, uh, the ways that, the way that protective style won't work for your hair is, uh, is if A, you, before you Put a protective hairstyle in you do not wash your hair you don't condition it your ends are damaged or you know not clipped or anything um it won't grow because you're not doing nothing but you know making your hair look good but once you take the weave out it's still going to have the same if not worse um behavior the same the same effects that it had before you put the weave in so if you're not doing anything before to nurture your hair outwardly then it's gonna look the exact same and probably even worse when you take the weave out because now you add stress to already stressed hair so you want to make sure when you do protective hairstyling that you are um, for the outward part of you that you are you know washing your hair deep conditioning before it moisturizing before um, making sure your ends are in a good state um, and then if you dyed your hair like like recently like last week or two weeks ago don't be in such a rush to throw weave in it because it's still fragile at that point so you want to give your hair time to just relax and you know get used to the shock that it just went through with dye so um yeah so you just want to make sure that you nurture your hair outwardly um in that manner so where you can have growing hair um so these are the ways that help me with my my hair growth because whenever i put a protective hairstyle in i always make sure that i you know wash my hair deep condition my hair i assessed my ends if they were still good then i would go ahead and um you know, do my hair in whatever style, crochet braids, uh, braids itself, any kind of twist, um, any kind of, you know, ponytails, anything that will help my hair be in the most healthiest state even during the protective hairstyle. Um, another thing that has helped me um, retain length during the protective hairstyle is still keeping it low maintenance. Um, style and not pulling my braids or whatever too tight to where I look like I got Botox or to where it's giving me a headache. Um, I still keep it loose so it's not pulling at my edges. You want to keep your edges, you want to keep your edges. And I know y'all are into laying the baby hairs and all this other type of stuff. Even though I'm not, I like the whole natural look so I really don't lay my edges. But um, you want to keep your edges. Um, you want to keep all of your hair on your head. So you want to, especially, you know, baby your edges and make sure that they are not being pulled too tight. And that's even with braiding or whatever hairstyle you have. You don't want to. You want to make sure that you're not pulling your hair so tight to where it's causing your hair to break and come out, even during the, prote the protective hairstyle. A lot of people get those very tight braids or micro braids or whatever and they have every hair snatched and it's, it doesn't look good it's not good for your hair I understand that you want to have like a beautiful hairstyle you want it to last long but if we don't embrace the naturalness of our hair our, na our hair naturally wants to go wild it naturally wants to frizz it naturally wants to curl up so it's kind of like us constantly trying to tame it and make it something that it's not it's going to cause stress to it um so you just have to be very considerate um, of that when you get in a protective hairstyle. Um, of course, another way the protective hairstyle will help you is if you're taking care of your body inside. Of course, drinking you know, lots of water, eating fruits and vegetables, things that will nourish your body from the inside. So when your hair is growing from a protective style, because of what you're doing in the inside will help it grow and it will be strong. So it won't be no weak hair coming out of your follicles or anything like that. And yeah, so you just want to be very careful. Um, and if you're really serious about growing your hair, just don't don't look at my hair or anybody else's hair with all this luscious, you know, length and thickness. It, you have to love what you have first. So you just have to really know what um, your hair loves when it comes to protective hairstyle. But for sure, if you want your hair to grow long, for sure, I would say the tips that I've given you, make sure you wash your hair. Condition your hair, moisturize your hair, and assess your hair before you put it into a protective hairstyle. 
even when you go to, to a salon, just make sure that they're not the ones who is taking over your head before uh, when you're there. Like they're not the ones that's always washing and conditioning so where you don't know what to do at home. So you have to take control of your growth. <laughs> um, that's spiritual. You have to take control of your growth um, and don't allow somebody else to try to, you know, or don't have somebody else to try to grow it for you. You have to take control of it yourself. So wash your hair, condition your hair, um, deep condition your hair, uh, moisturize your hair, assess your hair. If it needs clipping, clip it before you um, put your hair in a protective hairstyle. If it's good, then just make sure, you know, it's moisturized. Um, with my scalp, I, the only time I would put like some oil on it, if I feel like it's really getting itchy, sorry, my nose ran. If I feel like it's really getting itchy or whatever, but it usually like just up here in my crown or whatever, like in, not in the crown, like the perimeter around my edges or whatever, I would just put like some oil or whatever in this area and massage it. But other than that, like any part, any other part of my hair, I don't really, uh, put in the oil, but it is a great opportunity for you to have access to your scalp if you know that you have a dry scalp If you know that you uh, get dandruff really easily then that's a great opportunity for you to just you know part your hair and put the oil in it and just start massaging it in um, But I think that's all I have that's that's it's that's all I have It's really nothing to it. I haven't done anything you know so scientifically difficult to where you can't understand or get how to um, grow your hair in a protective style um, it's very possible that's I did this for from 2010 to 2000 to the end of 2010 is when I cut my hair off and then I start wearing weave until I was comfortable with the length but then after that I had you know more kids and it just became something easy so I kind of slipped into mistakenly um, protective hairstyle in my hair often also another thing you want to make sure when you do take your hair out of protective style you know you you still like I said you still want to baby it because it just came out of a stressful situation so when you take down your hair do not go grab a comb wide tooth or small and start combing your hair dry don't do that don't do that not good okay because then you can go break off your hair um, even with it being strong, um, you go break it off. And if it's weak, you definitely go see some major damage. But you don't want to comb your hair dry at all. That's why I, whenever I take my hair out of protective style, I always try to use my fingers first um, to see what I can loosen up. And then I use my conditioner, uh, my swab conditioner and spray bottle to, you know, just comb out any shed hairs with my fingers. And then I use the comb. The comb is always a last resort for me. So you don't want to comb your hair dry in any state, really, but especially when you come out of a protective hairstyle. Um, you want to make sure that you still give your hair a break. And honestly, a break ain't got to be, you know, a month long or whatever. If that's what you want to do, kudos to you. But I usually take like a week break, maybe almost two weeks to say, okay, um, I give my hair a break from, you know, being braided or crocheted or twisted or whatever and so now it's time for it to go back up so I will let my hair breathe for like a week or two and then I would you know end up putting another hairstyle in my hair now when your hair if you're so used to having protective hairstyle you want to make sure when your hair is out of protective hairstyle you're like what do I do with my hair when it's like loose and out and free um, my go-to hairstyles are um, I do a twist out and then after like a day or two of it being like out then I would you know assess the parts where you know my hair catches sweat and lint and dirt and where it's always just jumbled which is in a very back so I would take the part let's just pretend this is my hair but I would take the back of my hair um, the very nape of my hair and I would just make sure that it's not tangled and I would just pull it apart like this with my hands and then I would spray it and then I would just retwist the very back um, just so it can you know not get all matted or tangled or anything like that um, and then I always go to I would wear my hair in twist and I would pin it up in some type of style um, and then I will also wear it in like a back bun a back ponytail I would take it and put it in like a top knot I would do a half up half down so there's a lot of ways you can do your hair um, a lot of ways and when I take these out maybe I'll do like a video showing how you can style your natural hair um, during the in-between process of your protective styling but yeah that's what I do I just you know make sure that the parts that are most privy to tangles and knots 
I would just make sure I baby those and you know take care of those the most because they tend to catch it a lot <laughs> so yeah but yeah you definitely want to make sure you give your hair a breathe break in between protective hairstyles so that way it won't be so used to being like um, tugged at and pulled at and combed every time you take a hair uh, protective hairstyle out you go put another one in so your hair is like listen I need a break it's like constantly working out it's like your muscles like yeah it's working but I need a break they need to be restored so I need you to slow down either walk don't run or you know you know make this an easier workout day you always have to just give your hair a break okay so I think that is it um, I covered everything that's how I grew my hair um, I just had I did protective hairstyles I wore my hair for like six weeks to two months the most has been three months um, and then I would take my hair down and I would like I said I would finger detangle dry and then I would take some um, some conditioner, water spray bottle, finger detangle some more, use a comb, twist it up, and then I will wash, condi deep condition, and you know, moisturizing style. I will do that all the time. I give my hair a break um, for about a week or two um, before I put another protective hairstyle in. Um, I make sure I do not braid tight to where you know it looks like I got Botox or I'm surprised all the time. Um, I just make sure that I'm not putting as much stress on my hair that it already has from the protective hairstyle. So yeah, that's what I do. Um, I make sure my hair is good before I you know put a protective hairstyle in. I wash deep condition, moisturize, I look at my ends to see if they're good. If I feel any knots I will go and clip those or whatever. Um, if it needs a trim, I would do that. Um, and then I would say the, the best part of, or another tip I would say is making sure um, your hair is stretched. And you're probably like, girl, that means you gotta use heat. No, not true. All you have to do is, you know, once your hair is washed, you just twist it, put them in twists, however many twists. Um, I definitely don't do no small twists. I probably, probably give myself about eight twists. Eight twists or you can do braids or whatever. Um, and you just let it dry overnight. As long as it's detangled, once you take it once you take it down, then you're good. But leaving it stretched should just keep your hair all one length. You don't have to worry about you know combing anything or combing any knots out when it is curled, um, or try to part through curled hair um, because you can cause it to break if it's attached to another strand. So just having your hair stretched will definitely help you retain your length that you're um, when growing your hair. So um, having stretched hair. You know, you can blow dry. I'm not saying you can't blow dry, but it depends on how often you protective style. I wouldn't say if you protect your style every two months, blow dry your hair, you know, that often. But you can blow dry, you know, whenever you want. It's just, I would just say be careful. <laughs> Don't go crazy with the heat because that can definitely contribute to you not being able to retain your length because it'll be, you know, all this heat and it'll make your strands weak and, you know, they'll start to break off and all the other type of stuff. So you just want to be careful of um, not using a lot of heat. So, like I said, another alternative is you can just stretch it. A lot of people, I've seen some people do like the banding methods where they take like um, hair, hair ties or um, thread or whatever and they would just band their hair all the way down to the tip and let it dry that way to where it's fully stretched. I never tried that method because I don't know how to do it and yeah so I just pretty much just twist my hair up and I would just pin it for like a couple days and then I would put the hair hairstyle in and my hair would be stretched um, as much as I need it to be. So yeah that is it. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys understand now how to um, wear a protective hairstyle, how to um, grow your hair with um, protective hairstyle. And a lot of people is like look down on protective hairstyle because they think like, oh, you're just not rocking your natural hair. Or, oh, you don't embrace your natural hair. But in all honesty, it depends on the person. You know, I love natural hair. I love natural hair. Um, I love my texture, natural hair. It's just the times, like I said, I y'all know I'm busy. I got a whole family. I got three girls and a full-time job. So it's not like I can do our hair mm -hmm. every week because then that would be my full-time job just doing hair. So I have to give us something that's still going to grow our hair, but at the same time, um, not going to keep me in their heads and not going to keep me constantly turning around from one head to the next. That's, that's very stressful. I can't do it. But as long as I know that it's helping them, helping their hair growth and not hindering it, then I don't care what nobody say. I mean, I'm going to wear weave. I'm going to wear my natural hair. I know the reasons why I do it. Um, 
so that's why I'm doing it um, but yeah so these y'all know I put these in and um, the last video I showed you guys was it was my get ready with me but my last video was probably me actually putting these in but it's actually been let's see it's going on two months y'all that I've had these in because I put them in in July so it's been like six weeks so I put them in in July so I got a, quite a few I got a little new growth going you know I did put some oil in it I put some oil in my in my hair because like I said it was feeling like itchy and stuff like that but I don't it's, it's been good since I put the oil in and massaged it into my scalp it's been really good but um, like I said, I love this hairstyle. I love these locks because even when my hair grows out, it still looks natural. That's the goal. That's the goal. Anyway, so yeah, I love the fact that even when my hair grows out, it still looks good. So, um, I'll probably be taking these down um, in October. And then I'm going to wear my hair. I'm going to wear it out for a couple weeks. I don't think I'm going to put weave in my hair again. If I do, it's probably going to be some crochet. I'm really feeling some big crochet here for the fall, like some colorful fall auburn or burgundy type of big hair I'm feeling. And then I'll probably leave that in for a good four weeks and then I'm going to straighten my hair. So about two more months and I'll be straightening my hair, maybe six weeks. I'll be straightening my hair and I'm also going to be bringing you guys my daughter's lock update, which is probably going to be before this video. I don't know if it's going to be before or after, but gonna bring you her lock up there. But anyway guys that is it for this video I really hope that it was helpful I hope you guys enjoyed and listened and learned and took some tips and advice from all this goodness okay um and I will catch you guys in my next video don't forget to like comment and subscribe Thank you guys so much who have already subscribed. You guys are the bomb diggity. Um, I know nobody say that no more, but I'm saying it. Uh, but you guys are the bomb diggity. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye. Peace, love, and hair grease.